late last year, I configured the Supermodel emulator to make it as easy as possible for everyone to just enjoy. And I pre-configured pretty much everything with this emulator front to back. But as these things generally go, this now needs an update to keep it in line with the new builds of Supermodel, with a few more tweaks, fixes and enhancements. So this gives me the opportunity to redo the guide here to make it a little bit more streamlined. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna be covering all of the common issues along with their fixes. And I wanna cover some frequently asked questions. So if you have an issue after you've set everything up, you can always just go to that part of the video and hopefully fix it. I even go as far to provide button layout images for all of these games. So you're never gonna be lost with controls. Now here's a list of just some of the things that have been done and as you can see a lot of hard work has gone into this. But the main ones that everyone's going to be concerned about is the fact that controls have been pre-configured and that this is light gun ready. Now whilst I'm on the subject of light guns, I had previously missed using raw input with Star Wars which allows for light gun usage and that's now been rectified. Also thanks to updates to Supermodel, we can now use two players with the Lost World using its default analog input system, which is great news because this input system is far more accurate with a way more granular calibration system. So we no longer need to change the input type for this one in the game's XML. Anyway, enough of the pre-ramble, let's just get into the setup guide. You can grab the latest version of the Supermodel emulator from the official website. Now this website hasn't seen a proper update for about 10 years or so and the compatibility list here is somewhat out of date. All games in fact work with minimum issues. And the only thing that is kept up to date with this website is the download section here. So just download the top one and that'll be the most recent version. Now with the Sega Model 3 UI, unfortunately I'm gonna to have to leave you to find that one yourself. You need Sega Model 3 UI-860 or newer. Once you've downloaded both of those, obviously you want to unzip them. And then from the Sega Model 3 UI folder, you want to transfer across the include folder, the snaps folder, and the Sega Model 3 UI, and move those over to the Supermodel folder. Don't transfer any of these files because they're for older versions of Supermodel. Now, when it comes to ROMs, you can use recent main ROMs, but these need to be split or non-merged ROMs make sure that you're not using merged ROMs because Supermodel will just launch any random version that it finds in the zip file. So you can use as old as 0.236 and I've made sure everything is backwards compatible to that point. However, Magical Truck Adventure had a new dump which fixed the attract mode and that was updated in 0.249 and Ocean Hunter had an updated version found and that was updated or is going to be updated as of recording in 0.253. This is the set that you need to use with this configuration and it's essentially one game, one ROM with parents taking priority. Now, Git Bass UR is the clone of Bass DX. So we've got two versions of Sega Bass Fishing, but we only want to play the Git Bass UR version because it's the upright version. And that was the one that was ported over to the Dreamcast because it's more controller friendly. So if you're using split ROMs, you'll need the Bass DX ROM to be able to play the Git Bass UR version. So I'm gonna put the link for this Launchbox page in the description below. And whilst we're here, we're gonna grab the configuration files to make all of this work. And all I'm doing here is providing configuration files for Supermodel. So if we scroll all the way up to the top of this page and look top right, we've got download this file. Click on that and at the top here you've got my button layout images so you can download those if you want and you definitely want to grab the NVRAM zip so make sure you download that. Now depending on which controller you have you may need to download the X input any or the D input any. So you want to find out what input type your controller is and then download the appropriate any file. If you have a choice between X input and D input controllers, always go with X input. Now I've made the D input configuration with a PlayStation 4 controller. However, D input controllers can vary with their input IDs. So your mileage may vary with D input if you're not using a PlayStation controller. X input users don't need to worry about this at all because input IDs are identical between controllers. 
Once you have the NVRAM folder and the INI file for your input type, you need to put them in the following places. So just open up the NVRAM zip folder here. There's no need to unzip it. Select all of the files in here and move them over to the NVRAM folder in Supermodel. There we go. So now we're just gonna close this and we're gonna open up the zip file for the INI file. And again, no need to unzip it. And we're just gonna move that into the config folder and we're gonna replace the one that's already there. There we go. And simply doing that configures everything, skipping hours and hours of setup. Now that we've got everything we need in the correct place, we can go ahead and start the UI. Now, if you have your ROMs in this ROMs folder here in Supermodel, you won't need to set your ROMs folder location no matter where you put your emulator. But if your ROMs directory is in any other location, you can set it by using this folder button here. It's nice and easy. Now, all of these settings have been set for a reason, so I wouldn't recommend changing any of them unless you know what you're doing. However, there are some options that can just be freely adjusted, and your resolution is one of them. So you can just go ahead and change that to whatever you want or need it to be. And you can set a custom resolution with this button here. Now widescreen needs to be used at the same time as wide background, and this is essentially the widescreen hack, and it works really, really well with this emulator. You just need to make sure that you have a widescreen resolution set for this to work. And this can be freely toggled on and off. You just need to make sure that you're using both at the same time. Now, I do want to cover light gun usage and give it its own dedicated section of the video as it's the thing that I'm asked about the most. So this configuration is light gun ready. So there's everything calibrated and accurate for both players, raw input used on a per game basis, and all controls set and inverted where necessary. And I've also set this up so controllers can be used with the light gun games. Just make sure that your cursor is in the middle of the screen because your cursor position is the return position when you're using a controller. Now, if you only intend on using controllers and moving the cursor to the middle of the screen is getting a little bit annoying, you can stop that from happening by deleting the mouse inputs out of the INI file. So just scroll down to the light gun input section. There we go. That's all three of these. So there's Star Wars Trilogy, Lost World, and these two here. And all you need to do is just delete the mouse inputs out. So if it says mouse next to an input, just delete it out. And then you won't need to keep on moving the cursor to the middle of the screen. And obviously only do that if you're exclusively using controllers. Now, if you're already using light guns, I'm gonna assume that you're already aware of mouse indexing and the issues that it can cause. Basically, Windows can shuffle around your mouse indexing whenever it feels like it. So if your mice or your light guns suddenly stop working, nine times out of 10, it's the mouse indexing. And I do have a dedicated video on how to identify and change your mouse indexing using just Supermodel. So if they stop working for any reason, follow along with that video and I'll pop that in the description below and I'll put a card up above now. Now with LA Machine Guns, The Ocean Hunter and Star Wars, they should all remain accurate no matter the resolution or aspect ratio that you're using, and I do say that very loosely. However, with the Lost Weld, its accuracy is essentially locked to the aspect ratio that you calibrated it at. So because I've calibrated this using a 16 by nine resolution, I can then only use other 16 by nine resolutions and it remain accurate. So from this list here, I could only use this one. So this current calibration wouldn't work if you wanted to use this on a 4x3 display. However, if you go into the NVRAM folder, you'll see that I've provided a specific NVRAM file that's been calibrated for 4x3 resolutions. So just use this one instead if you're using a 4x3 display. And as I mentioned earlier on, the input type for the Lost World does not need changing in the game's XML. With the default analog gun input, now working for two players and being the preferred and accurate input method. Obviously, you'll still need to get this set up with your light gun and its proprietary software. But as for light gun setup, this is as much as I can do. And from here, you're good to play some games. But if you're having problems, come back to this part of the video because I'm now gonna be covering all of the common issues along with their fixes. One of the more common issues is Supermodel running fast despite VSync being set, which limits the frames to 60 FPS. 
and I was able to recreate this situation only once and that was when in my NVIDIA control panel I had my graphics settings set to performance. Now this was on older builds of Supermodel, I haven't been able to recreate it with newer builds so it might be fixed but if it is running fast and your slider is set on performance, move it up to quality, press apply and that should fix that situation. Another common issue is Supermodel looking zoomed in despite having all of the correct resolution and graphics settings. And this happens when you have anything other than 100% set for your scale and layout in your window settings. So if you've got 125 or any of these other settings set, it will look zoomed in. To fix this issue, just right click on the Supermodel EXE, press properties. Then we want to go to compatibility change settings for all users, then change high DPI settings, activate this checkbox and make sure that this is set to application, then just press OK, apply, OK, OK, and that's it, it should all work. If your mouse or light gun movement is being restricted to one axis, it means that it's clashing with the analog input with the left stick on your controller and there's three ways to deal with this. The quickest and laziest way to fix this is to simply disconnect the controller and take it out of the equation. The second option is to open up the INI file, go down to the bottom and you can increase the dead zone for the left stick and you can increase these values here. So at the moment this is set to 10% and you can increase that to help mitigate that issue. And the third option that you have available is to simply delete the controller inputs from the light gun games. So let's find the light gun games. There we go. So if you find a Joy 1 or Joy 2 input, you can just delete it out of there. And if you're only using light guns, I actually recommend that you do this, just so you're never going to have issues with clashing inputs with controllers. This one isn't necessarily an issue, but it is something I get asked about all the time, and that's how to change view in SkiChamp. So instead of actually using the start button to start our game, we're gonna use one of the following three buttons to start our game and simultaneously select our view. So instead of pressing start, you're gonna press one of these three buttons on your controller to start the game in that view. And you've got two third person views and a first person view. And if you use start to start the game, you'll always be using first person view. Unfortunately, you can't change view whilst playing the game. You can only select view when you start your game. Now over on that Launchbox forum page, you'll find a full write up and more information on exactly what I've done. But if we go towards the bottom of the page, you'll find a per game breakdown. And I've provided some general information here, including any cheats. So give that a good read through to make sure that you're not missing out on any content. There we go, that's how to get Supermodel set up and configured without having to spend hours doing it yourself. So if I managed to save you some time, slam me a thumbs up and if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.